<laughs> Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Well, it looked like some barnstormers show, chose Shelby County skies to storm today. Four biplanes were performing tricks and making people look up and point. You know how people do. They're the Holiday Inn aerobatic team here for an air show this weekend in Millington, and they asked photographer Scott Sutherland to go along on a practice run. And then as we come back over, We'll come under you again and pull up and kind of do a wing over like that so you can get almost a plan form shot of us as we come back down. You want those relatively tight because if okay. you do have to jump out, the chute's got to be tight on it. Well, it's, it's similar to combat flying to the extent that we're maximum performing the airplane. Two, three, four. Let's have fun. Do it. We have uh, come really to uh, entertain the people of Memphis. Uh, that's, that's what we are as entertainers. Now we happen to use airplanes for our media and uh, the sky is our stage. You can't hurt this airplane. You can make it tumble end over end and fly backwards and it, it won't hurt it at all. The air show is this Saturday and Sunday at the Naval Air Station in Millington. Admission is free. Gates open at 9. Shows start at noon. Scott got back late early this afternoon, but he's still waiting on his stomach to get here. I was just going to say, <laughs> why were his legs wobbly or what? You know, all, shaky. All of those pilots are former Vietnam War flying aces. I think we just saw they can fly. Ah, uh, yes. Airplanes. Beyond a doubt. Well, that's our news for now. I'm Pam Crittenden. I'm Jerry Tate. Have a good evening, everybody. And then as we come back over, we'll come under you again and pull up and kind of do a wing over like that so you can get almost a plan form shot of us as we come back down. You want those relatively tight because if okay. you do have to jump out, the chute's got to be tight on it. Well, it's, it's similar to combat flying to the extent that we're maximum performing the airplane. Two, three, four. Let's have fun. Do it. We have uh, come really to uh, entertain the people of Memphis. Uh, that's, that's what we are as entertainers. Now we happen to use airplanes for our media and uh, the sky is our stage. You can't hurt this airplane. You can make it tumble end over end and fly backwards and it, it won't hurt it at all. Kids aren't the only people who are taking advantage of Halloween. A few adults got decked out and they got a real treat for their trouble. Work took a holiday for a while today at the Mid-South Foundation for Medical Care to determine who had the best costume. The three blind mice showed up, along with all other sorts of ghosts and characters. News 3's Alex Coleman was even there. No, that's not a mask, that's the real thing. He was one of the costume judges. The winner? Well now, how could anyone be picked other than the hunchback woman? She got a day off work. And here you see, second place, she went, it went to the bag lady who pulled herself up out of her own trash pile. She got a half day off. The third place prize was a two hour lunch. Now those kind of prizes, I like a day off, a half day off. Oh, don't, that's great. Uh, yeah. We're gonna push for that here at <laughs> next Halloween. Everybody dress up and uh, that would be fun. They won't know who's out here. Who Alex looks sharp, you fooled me there. Yeah, for yeah, moment. for a minute there I thought it was a mask, but no, it was the real oh, thing. You look nice. <laughs> Oh,
By 7 o'clock this morning, the 160 guardsmen were ready to move out. With everything set, the soldiers spent their last minutes with family. You be a good girl, okay? Good, you be good. And study your lesson. That included hugs and kisses that have to last the six months these men and women will be gone. Sergeant Loretta Thornton found it tough saying goodbye to her two children. Yeah, it is. It sort of is. Pretty hard right now. It'll be better after we leave. The 268th had quite a reception waiting for them at the Ripley Town Square. At least 3,000 people turned out to see the convoy drive through town. Some townspeople say the turnout was bigger than any Labor Day or Christmas Day celebration. The huge crowd means a lot to relatives of the guardsmen. Just knowing that, you know, everybody supporting their family, love our boys, you know, and praying and hopefully come back home. I feel like the same as I do, you know. The soldiers didn't expect this kind of send-off and were pleasantly surprised. No, sir, I appreciate it. That tells me that everybody in Ripley is ready and behind us 100%. How you doing, sir? For the land of the Those left behind are already counting the days before their loved ones return. Joe Larkins, News 3, Ripley, Tennessee. Martin Luther King Jr. was a great dreamer. If ever a man knew Martin Luther King, it was Reverend Ralph Abernathy. He was with him in marches, prayers, and at the Lorraine the day King died. Today, Abernathy returned to the Memphis Motel with a message all his own. Black people, white people, brown people, yellow people, all people that God created from one blood the nations that dwell upon the face of this earth. Abernathy joined leaders from across the state in breaking ground on the $8.8 .8 million museum that will house exhibits, a theater, and meeting rooms dedicated to civil rights. It's a project some say the rundown Lorraine has needed for a long time. It's a victory over apathy. It's a victory over indifference. It's a victory over the unholy heritage that this site had become. But not everyone agrees with the Army Bailey. For more than a year, Jackie Smith seemed to have been the lone critic of the museum plan, living here in this tent on the sidewalk. Today of all days, she doesn't want to talk about her opposition, but she doesn't have to. There are other people here who feel the same way she does. These museum protesters have other plans for the $8.8 .8 .8 million to put into the school system or to feed the hungry people in Memphis or give houses to the homeless people. Opposition will likely continue throughout construction, but the Lorraine will soon be a shrine to a man, place, and time Americans should never forget. Steve Hayslip, News 3, downtown. The lobby of the music hall downtown looked like a scene from a horror movie. Blood splattered the escalator, children moaning in pain, frantic parents not believing their eyes. Blood everywhere, people laying all over the floor, students, one teacher with a bad gash on her head, one child with an extremely bad gash in his head. The students had just seen a play at the auditorium and were leaving on the escalator. Somebody stumbled at the bottom and they just started piling on top of each other. One lady fell back. And of course, when she did that, the steps were catching her head. I just screamed, go back, go back. And they tried to run back up the escalator as quick as they could, but some were already caught coming down. And they just piled on top of everybody else. Several kids suffered cuts. Parents and rescue workers tried to keep them calm. They just got squished and squished, and they couldn't get the people up off the ground. It was just it was horrible. 
17 children and two teachers were rushed to hospitals. Worried parents arrived minutes later. Have you heard whether your child was involved in the accident or he not? He was involved. The accident here has prompted officials to rethink their policy regarding school children in hopes that this accident doesn't happen again. For school age groups, particularly elementary school age groups, we will not use the escalators as a method of entrance into or exit out of uh, the mezzanine level of the South Hall.